major sponsors for Ableton on Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel. Food sponsors for Ableton on Air include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton on Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Hello and welcome to this edition of Ableton on Air, the one and only program that for the past eight or nine seasons has been focusing in Vermont and beyond, has been focusing on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. We would like to thank our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health, Green Mountain Support Services, Parkchester Times, and many others, including, uh, including the Muslim Community Report, as well as our new sponsor within the Parkchester Times, the New York Parrot. Um, we would like to welcome Shikei Musadrame, uh, Editor-in-Chief of the New York Parrot, as well as um, media extraordinaire and a journalist uh, um, to Ableton On Air. Thank you very much for joining us on this edition of Ableton On Air. Um, Shikei, uh, can, uh, can, can you explain a little bit more about the New York Parrot and your journalism? Thank you, my friend, my brother, my colleague, Larry. Mm -hmm. um, I greet you and I greet your wife and I greet all the members of your, you know, noble media network. You and I have been on the same side of history for so long and, you know, we're going to continue to do what we have been doing, which is uplifting people, friends and first, those who are near and those who are far. So. I'll begin by saluting your leadership in converting a lemon into lemonade. Um, you know, a lot of times when people have, you know, some type of physical disability or mental, then they get rendered um, at the back, um, you know, backside of the seating arrangement. And unlike you, you said, no, we have to empower ourselves and we have to empower those that need to be empowered those who are physically different so i salute you for that and whatever that i can do you know to support your journey you can count me on now in terms of myself so i am the founder of muslim media corporation based in new york city muslim media corporation today runs or publishes three newspapers, uh, namely Parkchester Times, which serves primarily the residents of Parkchester area. And some of you uh, should know that Parkchester has over 70,000 residents. It's a town by itself. And we also publish Muslim Community Report, which pretty much uh, is the bridge between the growing Muslim, mostly immigrant communities in New York City and the larger communities um, of neighbors. And we also publish, uh, I mean, New York Parrot. And New York Parrot is our main newspaper that only covers anything and everything that our readership may be interested in. There's it is not based on any particular geography or demographic or nothing. It's just your typical daily news or any other publications. Why do we um, set up this uh, media network? Well, um, as Muslims, after 9-11, we got so angry and so upset that in our religion, some criminals uh, would use it to 
hurt other people, to commit crime, to become radicalized and extremists and killers. So we had decided that we will do whatever we can to make sure that we counter this toxic, deadly, evil ideology emanating out of our religion. So after... The best way to do that was to set up a media that can really amplify our voices and then let the public know that these uh, killers are killers. They have nothing to do with our religion. So That's after... after um, oh, okay. So after... Um, Osama bin Laden was killed uh, from, uh, well, you know, Obama announced that uh, some years ago. Um, and even before that, um, so after, so this really began after 9-11 because of the fact that Muslims would start getting a, a, a bad rap of uh, the way that Muslim w that Muslims and Muslims um, ideology was being treated. Is that why Muslim Community Report really started? That was the sole reason. We did not set it up to make money, but now we want to make money. But the original concept mm -hmm. was that these extremists who are using the modern tools of communication in recruiting and radicalizing innocent youths in our urban cities, we need to counter them. We need to find where their messages are being transmitted out of and then and into, and then we counter that with a message of patriotism, with a message of real faith, with a message of, um, you know, letting the whole world know that if you are with them, you are with criminals, you are with terrorists, you are with killers, you have no religion. They have absolutely no ideology except hatred and hateful ideology that serve nobody, mm -hmm. only to self-destruct. And that was the impetus for this. And we are very excited that we had the ability through our medium, through our media networks, you know, be able to travel around the world and hold and hosted forums talking to law enforcement, talking to politicians, talking to academia, talking to everybody. And today, you know, we are among, you know, the most reliable group of patriots that, you know, have the ability to really immediately counter any message sent by these criminals. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as far as Muslim media. How does how does Muslim media uh, deal with um, you know because certain religions um, put it under the rug. So how does Muslim media uh, help uh, or or I should say how does the Muslim community deal with people with disabilities since we're on that topic as well. Um, can you, and since you're an imam uh, as well, can you explain some of that? Absolutely. Um, Larry, you know, uh, this is not exclusive, you know, to Islam or to Muslims. Every soul, whether that of a human being or an animal, every soul is entitled to the best care that is available to that soul. Now, religion should not become so divisive and so evil that it only serves a select groups of people. A religion should be a platform for mercy, platform for wisdom, platform for love, and platform for equality, and a platform where every soul, whether it is a able body or disabled, young or old, religious or non-religious, rich or poor, must receive the maximum care and love um, uh, and protection possible. So, you know, we do not see able and disabled people in any different way. We are all, we are all uh, you know, the creator 
creation of God, and we're all entitled, you know, to be regarded as, uh, you know, a special creature. Mm -hmm. So, Islam, you know, you will never ever find a real Muslim that would discriminate a person because that person has physical disability. That will never be the case. Now, you can have Muslims who are Muslims by name and do all crazy things, just like those who follow Ben Laden. That are not the people I'm talking about. I'm talking about real Muslims. Mm -hmm. You will never ever look at a person and discriminate them or leave them alone to fend for themselves. Mm -hmm. So, whatever needs to be done, it is a mandatory for us to provide it to the best of our ability. Okay, now, let's get to the New York Parrot, because I have a camera behind me here. And notice on the bottom of, let's talk about coronavirus for a minute, because that's on everybody's mind. Um, I notice on the bottom of your website, uh, you have the coronavirus cases. Is that updated on a, on a weekly, monthly, I mean, not monthly, hourly um, time, or how is that updated? That, um, um, you know, that sticker, sticker tape is updated by the second. Whatever you see there is the latest um, information about each particular country. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we have it there, because there is nothing as crucial uh, in this day uh, than the pandemic. And unfortunately, there are a lot of religious people who have not really taken, you know, the precautionary steps who even follow um, the maximum way possible, the rules of the pandemic. So we wanted to show that our priority number one now is to guide the faithful so that they will take this pandemic so seriously that they will, uh, you know, uh, uh, prevent spreading it um, to their neighbors and end up hurting them or worse yet, you know, becoming the centers of, uh, you know, infectious, uh, uh, virus infectious. Well, so we want to educate the public so that you know, through education they can take precautionary measures. Well, what exactly do you mean that some religious groups are not following the pandemic? There are some religious uh, people, until today, they believe that their congregational religious services um, are more important than taking and then following the rules of pandemic. And that is, to me, counterproductive. That is, to me, without wisdom. I think saving a life is universally more important than any religious practices or any religious congregation, congregational services. So we do not want, you know, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, to say, oh, you know, it is mandatory for us to pray together. No. What is mandatory is for you to protect your life and the life of your neighbor. That is mandatory. When the pandemic is over, then you can bring hundreds and thousands of people and congregate and do whatever you want. But in this day and age, priority number one is to socially distance, is to put on masks, is to frequently uh, wash our hands and to observe all the pandemic protocols. I don't care what religious, uh, what religious uh, you know, affiliation you have. Priority number one is public safety. Mm. Our own safety and the safety of our neighbors. And any religious congregational gathering must be, must be limited so that we will not cause harm to ourselves, our congregants, and our neighbors. Okay. Um, now, uh, in terms of... I, I'm taking a look here. So... So what is the difference between Park Chester Times and the New York Parrot? Are there any, uh, is there any, and, and the Muslim Community Report, is there any differences or similarities to, to each of the papers? Absolutely. Park Chester Times is a Park Chester community-based 
newspaper. The primary focus of Pakistan Times is to, uh, is to provide services um, relevant and pertaining to Pakistan and beneficial primarily to the residents of Pakistan and the Pakistan vicinity. So our main concentration was to be a, is to be a conduit for Pakistan residents and entrepreneurs and the larger community. So our main, main, main target is Pakistan. New York Terror is not only city-wide, but is a global paper. Just like New York Times, there is no geographic boundary. Whatever, uh, wherever we get information or wherever our information needs to go, so be it. And in terms of our primary focus, there's none. Anything that is beneficial to our readers, you know, we will put it there. So, and a Muslim community report, um, even though it is also a generalized uh, newspaper, but we really want to focus on um, some editorials that can be very beneficial to the larger community from the Muslim intellectuals, such as if there is some type of what they call padwa, or there's an instructor from the criminals abroad, Muslim community report will immediately refute every single letter of it and then give proof that if you follow it, you follow it to your destruction. These people are can you, can you, I apologize, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. And you mean the Muslim community report? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, the Muslim community report, the main target is for the editorials to be able to quickly refute anything that emanates from these terrorists abroad that sometimes to communicate, you know, with what they call fatwa or instructions for people to, to commit a crime. We can quickly because uh, I'll give you I'll I'll give you an example with that. Um, yeah. it, uh, one of my relatives in Israel was telling me that you know one of our relatives in Israel was telling me that in Palestinian you know the Palestinians some of the Palestinians are teaching their kids um, from these countries. Uh, Kuwait and so on, because you turn on the TV, they're teaching their kids how to shoot guns, um, how to, how to, you know, I mean, you have um, people dressed in Mickey Mouse costumes teaching kids how to shoot uh, firearms. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous, and we, and also we discussed this in 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 one of your forums that you had online, if you remember that. So. So these, so now I understand, so can you, uh, so now I understand the peaceful transfer of, of your situation and not um, going the opposite, because, um, I mean, we have to get that out of people's minds. Larry, you and I um, live in a nation that has the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. And the Second Amendment is so misused. Thank by, you. Thank by, you. By the head, by the head groups. And mm -hmm. because of that, they think the entitlement to the Constitution to uh, own um, guns. Um, so everybody, whether they are criminal, whether they are thief, whatever, everybody is entitled to the same thing. So whether they are Palestinians or whether they are, you know, white skin skinheads or whether they're hateful groups it does not matter so hate is hate mm -hmm. and our goal here with the muslim community report is to always fight hate with love and through education because a lot of times even the hateful people they're ignorant they don't know what they're doing they're recruited they're in echo chambers and somebody telling them oh this is about jews and catholics and Arabs and the Europeans, and then that's it. And nobody, and nobody is really following. I mean, and we can talk about this for a minute. Recently, last month was Martin Luther King's birthday, and also recently um, was the anniversary of the death of uh, Coretta Scott King. Um, nobody really follows. 
um, people are starting to forget what Martin Luther King stood for. You know, um, with all this, these hate groups, I mean, yes, you have Black Lives Matter. Um, I mean, the thing with George Floyd it was uh, horrible, you know. Um, it, we just need to be in, in a more peaceful transfer, and hopefully um, this new administration can fix a lot of the things. I mean, it's okay to talk about it because, um, you know, it's First Amendment. But hopefully this new, uh, admi uh, this new administration can fix what happened in the last administration. I mean, the past four years has been full of hate, has been uh, just absolutely pandemonium, just ab absolute garbage. Uh, do you want to talk about that being a journalist um, and how maybe we can fix it? Larry, I am not. Uh, actually, I am not the editor in chief. I am the publisher of this newspaper. Publisher, I, I apologize. Go ahead. Yeah, but 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 since uh, since, uh, uh, since a lot of cases, um, you know, the they will refer a case or a content or submission to me. If I tell you almost every day we reject so many um, kind of information sent to us to either follow up because most of them are hateful uh, materials to attack somebody and to destroy somebody's reputation and to promote some extremists here and there. We say no and no and no. If you look at what happened uh, in the last three, four years, you know, you watch some media outlets. All they do, all they have been doing is promoting divisiveness, promoting aid, promoting victimhood, promoting all kinds of, you know, uh, 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 stuff that only serve, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to culminate into January 6th. Because these, uh, uh, you know, fools, who stormed the capital. Some of them... Mm, yeah, let's talk about that. Uh -huh. They were acting on a patriotic mission. They were doing what the country needs, and they were doing the good thing. They were the second framers. But yet, most of them, if not all, got uh, bad information instilled in them by this media. So I wholeheartedly believe that, even though we have the freedom of the press, freedom of expression, but we should also be held uh, accountable and responsible for what we said and what we published. Mm -hmm. And certain networks need to be sued for lying and continue to lie that cost life. Because January 6th, six, seven, six or seven people died. One of them was a police officer. Yes. Somebody need to be held accountable for the lie of a police officer that was unjustly taken and the media need to be more responsible for their programming for their editorials and for their priorities yeah uh two weeks ago we did a show on prejudice so that that's where i want to take it uh for, further um have you have you seen um both in the past present and future um do you I mean, obviously, prejudice will never go away. Um, but you, as, as a media person, do you, do you see any changes within the system? Well, um, Larry, you have to understand one thing. When the collective are uh, 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 again, uh, put against their backs, the collective will learn a new way of collaborating and cooperating. Even though there are uh, millions of people who are hateful, who are ignorant, who are prejudiced, misogynistic, anti-Semite, you name it. What, what's, oh, hold on, back up, back up. For our, our listening audience, what is misogynistic? Meaning, uh, of, uh, you know, fools who believe that man has a higher... Uh, status in society than women. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, so 
Um, uh, so, uh, even though they, these, uh, you know, there are millions and millions of people in in recently most divided nation, but what happened is the the reason why we are in a very peculiar position as media houses. We have a constitutional, we have an ethical, we have moral responsibility to making sure that people who depend on our content are not being misled, are not being fed with hatred, are not being used as tools of self destruct mm -hmm. I promise you one thing. If we have more responsible media, we will have a better nation more loving nation and less divisive nation. Most of the division that that is taking place, yeah, you know, uh, uh, you know, is coming from, you know, irresponsible media programming. I mean, you watch some channels today; they will spend all their time attacking others, attacking other media, attacking other parties. I mean, just attack, attack, attack. All they do is attack others, demonize others. And the people who watch them and don't know any better, they follow suit. And we don't want to do that. We want to create, you know, responsible media that is socially responsible media where you can be informed, empowered, and then your patriotism will be enforced, and then your love of the neighbors, you know, will be strengthened so that our national motto, which is out of many, one, become realized. America is the greatest nation under the sun. Why? Because America is home to people from all walks of life. When they get here, they immediately become part of what's best of this nation. That needs to be promoted by the media. We need to concentrate on what we have in common, and we need to lessen the divisive mechanism that we are instilling in the brands of the less suspecting individuals among us. A lot of people are in echo chambers. They just, you know, follow one one media outlet and whatever that media outlet said, that's what they're going to believe, that's what they're going to act to us. Mm. It's the same thing years ago back in the uh, back in World War II, almost the same thing as Hitler's regime. People, I, I mean, he was snapping his fingers and whatever Whatever he said, people would do. So it's, it's, it's almost the same thing. And, and, you know, he believed in one race and one people. I mean, we, we just need to be more peaceful and, and, and get it to be back, uh, get it to be back where it was. You know what I mean? Larry, uh, I don't know if I told you this, but, you know, I host uh, peace dinners every Friday with gang members. And, one time, I was so alarmed by the level of anti-Semite within the gang members, I had to invite Rabbi Kaplan. And Rabbi Bob Kaplan attended one of our meetings. I said, don't say anything, sit down and observe. Rabbi Kaplan was there until the end of the meeting and witnessed, you know, what was going on there. And at the end, I introduced Rabbi Kaplan to the gang members. And Rabbi Kaplan got up and spoke to them. And then Rabbi Kaplan became friends with the number two Sulu nation out of the group. Because these were not just young crews and young gang members. These, uh, these were the leadership, uh, the leadership from the Bloods and Crips and Latin King, you name it. And so, just to show you what we can do as responsible citizens, whether we are journalists or not, we should always find our natural roles and play them to unify our people. We are one family. We have one destiny. It doesn't matter who we are. We born, we die. And it doesn't matter where you come from. You are part of the human family. In the book in the book of Genesis in the book of Ge in the book of Genesis in the Bible it says from dust to dust in which we came. So yeah. Perfect. Well nothing you can nobody can skip that. Not the beginning, not the ending. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, I would like to thank you for joining me on the, uh, this edition of Able to On Air. Uh, it's been a, a, a an extreme pleasure to talk um, 
to the publisher of uh, the Muslim Community Report, Parkchester Times, as well as the New York Parrot. And and uh, can you give information if people want to submit? Uh, <clears throat> if people want to submit uh, uh, articles or 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 anything of that nature, where do they need to turn? What's the information that you can give? Yes, absolutely. They can use um, you know any one of our three email uh, addresses: editor at podcastertimes dot com, editor at muslimcommunityreport dot com, or editor at newyorktarot dot com. So either one of them will get to the um, to the chief editor, and um, then then they will. It's all one person. No, no, no. They, you know, they're, they're editorial team, but uh, but there's a head of it. There's a chief editor who pretty much, uh, you know, uh, leads the team. But they, are, you know, they're a team of editors, capable editors, I may add. But if people if people want to get in touch with you, the publisher, where do they um, email? Yeah, they can uh, they can um, they can use one of those emails and then you know put reference that they need to. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, they need to connect with me, and then they will forward it the email. Usually, you know, uh, uh, I don't read those emails unless it is pretending to me, and they will forward it to my personal email. So you can just use those emails and indicate that you want you want to connect with me, and they will forward it what is relevant to me. Oh, is there a phone number that they can contact? Yeah, the phone number is seven one eight eight two two. Five 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 seven one eight eight two two five 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 twenty four hours seven days a week. Okay, uh, we would like to thank Shakem Musa Jame for joining us um, on this edition of Able Then On Air. If you would like more information, please contact seven one eight eight two two five 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 five. That number again is seven one eight. Uh, 8225555 and it's been an extreme pleasure to talk to him today uh, Arlene Seiler is not here today uh, we would like to thank our sponsors the Muslim Media Corporation um, Park Test of Times Muslim Community Report and New York Parrot as well as <clears throat> Washington County Mental Health and Green Mountain Support Services as, and many others uh, this puts an end to this edition of Able Dinner on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Major sponsors for Able Dinner on Air include Green Mountain Support Services of Vermont, Washington County Mental Health, Ale Israel. Food sponsors for Ableton on Air include Geffen Foods Israel, Osem Foods Israel. Major media sponsors for Ableton on Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info Associated Press Media Editors U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International Anchor FM and Spotify